couple of years ago, there was The Real Deal, a genuine, unexpected, runaway New York Times bestseller. And I say that because there are very infrequently unexpected runaway New York Times bestseller. But the book 2034 by Admiral James Stavridis, retired United States Navy, former Allied Supreme Commander, and Elliot Ackerman actually was an unexpected runaway New York Times bestseller. And at the time, I said, we need more. And they came up with 2054, which drops today. And I welcome back Admiral Stav and Elliot Ackerman to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Congratulations, gentlemen. Admiral, let me start with you. Your publisher blew it. They sent it to Virginia, not California, so I haven't read it yet. I get it on Saturday. How's it being received by people like me who love 2034? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, there certainly is a lot of enthusiasm. And the reason, Hugh, is because we move on from 2034, great power competition, a war with the U.S. and China. Now it's 2054, set mid-century, artificial intelligence, geopolitics continue. And as the novel opens, a president falls over dead at a campaign event. Who killed him? How? Is artificial intelligence involved? It all unspools in the course of this novel. Well, that's a good opening. Elliot, you and the Admiral are very accomplished authors. You're also veterans. How do you work together on a novel like this? Because 2034 was a big win. 2054 is going to come out number one on the New York Times. How do you work with each other? You know, we uh, outline these books, uh, you know, where we align uh, on exactly what's going to happen in terms of the story. Uh, you know, we do a lot of back and forth, uh, and then we sort of go chapter by chapter. So uh, someone usually takes a first crack at the chapter, and that's, that's me. And then uh, I hand it to the Admiral, you know, with certain gaps, uh, you know, like an enormous naval battle happens here, or we say something interesting about artificial intelligence here. And then we just sort of go chapter by chapter, batting them back and forth, and that's sort of how we've been working uh, on this series, it's going to be a trilogy. Now, you are at the frontier of warfare when you bring up artificial intelligence, the singularity. I assume that you've got supercomputing involved in this as well, as well as bio warfare, Admiral. Uh, which one did you need to learn the most about and which was the most difficult to master? Yeah, what a great question. The thing I needed to learn the most about was the bio side of this, as you'd probably expect. I've been coding since I was in my 20s. I've always been seized with cybersecurity. The technology side was very comfortable, certainly the warfare side. But to learn about the biological side and how these two things come together is really at the heart of the learning process in putting this together. Uh, Elliot, let me ask you, in terms of the Navy of 2054, the United States Navy, do we still have carriers or have we decided that they've gone the way of the battleship? Well, I think what you certainly see is that uh, aircraft carriers are no longer so central in our U.S. naval strategy. And what we do is we take current trends and extrapolate them outwards. Uh, and we're seeing those trends right now in places like Ukraine, uh, where half of Russia's Black Sea fleet uh, has been basically compromised by a Ukrainian Navy that has no capital ships but is reliant on surface drones. So, Admiral, how big is our Navy in 2054? The president's budget went up with a 0.9% increase, and we're down to one Virginia class this year. What's the Navy in 2054 looking like? Do we continue to shrink the fleet? I'm going to cross my fingers and hope boldly that our naval fleet has expanded to be capable of meeting global responsibilities, which clearly it's not today. Uh, we've only got 290 ships. China has 350 and is building more. We're decommissioning too many. We've got serious work to do. But here's the punchline. By 2054, the Navy is going to be dispersed, more swarms, more unmanned, linked to space, perhaps using some of these biological tools, all of it lashed together by artificial intelligence. It'll look quite different, uh, but ultimately one thing won't change, and that's geography. 70% of this planet is water. Goods will move by water. We need to control the oceans of the world. I'm hoping you gentlemen come back next week after I've had a chance to read this, but Elliot, I got to ask you one question before we get away. 
Are you afraid of AI? You know, you're going to have to deal with this. The Admiral and I will go to our rewards before AI fully unfolds in the world. Maybe not, but certainly you will be dealing with it for the rest of your life. Does it make you stay awake at night? I wouldn't say that I'm afraid of AI because I don't think being afraid of it uh, is useful. I mean, this is the future, and I think uh, what is incumbent upon us is, and what we try to do in 2054 is to extrapolate where that future is taking us. And I think it'll be there'll be enormous opportunities that present themselves with artificial intelligence, um, but also enormous challenges. And we outlined some of those challenges uh, in 2054, particularly as they relate to uh, to also our politics at home. Well, I touched down Saturday night at 9, and I assume by Sunday night I'll be deep into 2054, and I congratulate you gentlemen. We'll talk again next week. I am hoping to actually get my arms around AI via, this is where fiction matters so much, 2054, if it's anything like 2034, is going to rock the bestseller list. Go out and get your copy today. It's available at Amazon, of course, at all bookstores. It'll be in the airport. I may even pick up, I may actually buy a book, which is against my every bone in a radio host body so I can read it on the airplane on Saturday. Congratulations, Admiral Stab and Elliot. I'll talk to you again next week about 2054. Maybe I'll even listen to it. 2054 available today.